What's new from Apple? There's the new iPhone 16 Pro, built for Apple intelligence. And it comes with the all-new camera control, giving you an easier way to quickly access your camera tools. The new Apple Watch Series 10 has our biggest display and our thinnest design ever. And this? It's the sound of active noise cancellation, now available on one of two new AirPods 4 models. So quiet. Check out all of the new products and new features at Apple.com. You can even buy yourself something new. See Apple.com for product availability updates. Apple Intelligence coming this fall. Hear that? Yeah, that's the sound of you relaxing. Because now you're managing diabetes with the Freestyle Libre 3 system. You get to know your glucose levels and where it's headed. Manage your diabetes with more confidence with the Freestyle Libre 3 system. Ready to learn more about the number one prescribed CGM in the U.S.? Visit FreestyleLibre.us to learn more. Based on retail sales data for patients' last full prescription by manufacturer. Refer to the Flair NL4 study published in BMJ Open Diabetes Research and Care 2019. Safety info found at FreestyleLibre.us. This is what you do when you've just found that statement handbag on eBay and you want to build an entire wardrobe around it. You start selling to keep buying. Yep, on eBay. Over that all black everything phase, list it and buy all the color. Feeling more vintage than ever? It's out with the new and in with the pre-loved. Next thing you know, you've refreshed your wardrobe basically without spending a dime. Yeah, eBay, the place to buy and sell new pre-loved vintage and rare fashion. Why can't you have a concert at the poultry farm? The chickens won't stop shouting free bird. Why was the sand wet? Because the seaweed. Why are mushrooms such great entertainers? Because they're fun guys. If you just read the bio for Dr. Steve, host of Weird Medicine on Sirius XM 103 and made popular by two really comedy shows, Opie and Anthony and Ron and Fez, you would have thought that this guy was was a bit of, you know, a, a clown. Why can't you give me the respect that I'm entitled to? I've got diphtheria crushing my esophagus. I've got Ebola virus dripping from my nose. I've got the leprosy of the heart valve exacerbating my incredible woes. I want to take my brain out and blast it with the wave, an ultrasonic, echographic, and a pulsating shave. I want a magic pill for all my ailments, the health equivalent of Citizen Kane. And if I don't get it now in the tablet, I think I'm doomed and I'll have to go insane. I want a requiem for my disease. So I'm paging Dr. Steve. It's Weird Medicine. From the world-famous Cardiff Electric Network Studios, the first and still only uncensored medical show in the history of broadcast radio, now a podcast. I'm Dr. Steve with my little pal, Dr. Scott, the traditional Chinese medicine provider, gives me street cred. The wacko alternative medicine assholes. Hello, Dr. Scott. Hey, Dr. Steve. This is a show for people who would never listen to a medical show on the radio or the internet. If you've got a question you're embarrassed to take to a regular medical provider. If you can't find an answer anywhere else, give us a call at 347-766-4323. That's 347-Poohhead. Follow us on Twitter at Weird Medicine or at Dr. Scott WM. Visit our website at drsteve.com for podcasts, medical news, and stuff you can buy. Most importantly, we are not your medical providers. Take everything here with a grain of salt. Don't act on anything you hear on this show without talking it over with your health care provider. Right, very good. Tacey's not here. PA Lydia's not here. We have new uh, artwork, by the way, on our YouTube channel. Check that out. And on our Twitter, uh, uh, you know, whatever it is, Twitter feed, at Weird Medicine. And it's got... You and Tacey and P.A. Lydia on there. Have you seen it? Yeah, I have. Okay. So we'll autograph those when we send out stupid crap to people. And uh, don't forget, if you buy something at simplyherbals.net, Dr. Scott will give you a fancy one of these poker chips. Shitty poker chips. Fancy poker chip. That has my face on one side. And that just says, thank you for your support fluid on the, on the back side. <laughs> I don't think I told him to do that. But uh, we have some other actual poker chip sets coming out <laughs> that are going to be awesome. And the, the, only a few of those are going to be made, and those will be 
uh, probably displayed once and then sent to the people who will appreciate them. But anyway, but um, yeah. So if you buy something from Dr. Scott, do you need some more poker chips? Are not you yet. Not yet. But we've gone through a couple a few of, them. of them. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Okay. Very good, good news. Good news. Simplyherbals.net. Check out uh, the uh, uh, CBD or non-CBD nasal spray. Yep. Yeah, I've got some Christmas specials or holi- rather holiday specials coming. So. There you go. Winter solstice Win- special. Winter solstice specials. Check yeah. it out. Because <laughs> he's, you know. Spatial. Dr. Scott is a pagan. <laughs> Patreon.com slash weird medicine. If you want to hear something different but similar enough, go to Patreon.com slash weird medicine. It's the only place that you'll hear the WATP uh, uh, crossover that was done for Sirius XM. And I took out segments of it and put it up there. Uh, I can't put it out as a regular podcast. And then um, there's also, uh, yeah, my my uh, thing at the um, at the roast. My set at the roast is on there. Have you listened to it, Doctor Scott? Oh gosh. God, you son yeah, of a bitch! No, I, I meant to. Oh, that's on my short list. See, that's some list. <laughs> Your old buddy <laughs> finally did something decent, and. Uh, you didn't even listen to it. And then uh, Cameo has been blowing up. It's been fun. It's oh, cool. It's dirt cheap. Uh, that one. That, oh, oh, I wanted to read this. I wish P.A. Lydia and uh, P. and P.A. Daisy were here. I'm, let me read this to you, though, and uh, to the listeners, because I, I was really touched by this, to be honest with you. And this is, an, uh, um, so when you do a Cameo for someone, they can do a uh, message back to you. And I did one for um, this guy, for his girlfriend, and she was taking care of her parent or something that had... Your mama. Yeah, yeah her mama. That had uh, uh, Alzheimer's dementia yeah. and felt guilty about putting her in a nursing facility after six years of doing all the care. And we said, listen, you've done God... You know, you've, you've stored up treasure in heaven. Yeah. You've done God's work. Uh, you know, most people wouldn't do that at all. And no. you should, you've got to do what's best for your mom. And if you can't do it anymore, you can't do it. So she texts it back, said, hi, recently. Ah, oh, shoot. Now, well, now my phone rebooted. Don't ever buy a Motorola, whatever the shit this thing is. <laughs> it sucks. It just reboots on its own for no reason. I didn't do anything to make it reboot. That's not good. Hey, you want it? No, I no, you, no you, you want the info? Well, no, do you have my cameo on your phone? I recently did a cameo video from my. Oh no, you sent it to us. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, yeah you yeah. can read it. You can read it. Well, here you read it. It was. It was. You did it. <laughs> That's your stuff. Well, all right. Well, this is this is going to be one hell of a show where we're just. I, it's still booting up. You read okay. it. So it says hi. I, you recently did a cameo video for my mom, uh, um, from my boyfriend John regarding uh, my transitioning my mom to memory care. I am a doctor too, which makes this didn't transition hard. No, we didn't know. Thank you for your support. I have played it again and again and again. Oh. Um, and then Dr. Steve, of course, sends back, okay, you're the best. Well, I don't know. You don't have to say what I said, and, but I, and I just thought that was cool. Yeah, wait, no, so, no, Dr. Steve, oh, wait, I'm the best is what he says. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> I am the best. You are correct. <laughs> so th- no, we're glad camp- Crystal's doing Yeah, we're yeah, glad yeah. She's feeling better. yeah. And that was nice of John to do that for her. It was. Uh, he, he's a good boyfriend. That's a tough, that's a tough Cost gig. all of $10. That's a tough, was it, damn, that's that much? Yeah, I think so. You've gone up. I don't know what my, it's, it's, <laughs> it depends on what platform. Best ten dollars you can spend. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Uh, I mean, it's almost embarrassing, but I I like doing them, so I don't want to charge people a lot of money for it. No, I think it's pretty cool. And um, but anyway, but it's fun. It's cameo.com slash weird medicine. Hello, Doctor Scott. Hey, Doctor Steve. Don't forget uh, to check out Doctor Scott's website at simplyherbals.net. That's simplyherbals.net. And I do want to say uh, happy birthday to our uh, network founder, uh, Mr. Cardiff Electric. So happy birthday, sir, to you. Um, Okay, so thanks to James H., uh, we have a correction. Uh, A couple of shows back, we were talking about popcorn lung. And uh, we were talking about it in relation to vaping and how we hadn't heard about it for a while. And that I thought that it was caused by the vitamin E uh, oil that they were using in some of the knockoff vape things. Well, 
Popcorn lung is bronchiolitis obliterans. That part I knew. Mm -hmm. And I always thought that it was called popcorn lung because when you look at the x-rays of people, it looks like little patchy infiltrates looks like popcorn. Okay. That was uh, completely wrong. Oh, no, wait, wrong one. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that is not correct. So... Uh, although I talked to P.A. Lydia about it, and she agreed it looks like popcorn in your lungs. The reason it's called popcorn lung is because they identified the disease originally among workers in a microwave popcorn factory. And the workers had breathed in this chemical called diacetyl, which is a flavoring chemical used to make the popcorn taste buttery. And there are small amounts of diacetyl in some of the oils that people were using in the original sort of uh, vape pens that people were purchasing around the country. And we've, they felt that that was where that scare came from. Now, the other thing that had to do with vitamin E was a real thing, but it wasn't, uh, didn't relate to popcorn lung. Vitamin E acetate, acetate uh, was identified as a cause of acute vaping-related illness. Hmm. So it's A-V-R-I, I think it, it's called. And uh, vitamin E acetate is a condensing agent they use in these vaping products. And all of the injured lung fluid samples that they, that they got when they did biopsies on people that were having this problem had that agent. So... You know, it was this sort of mysterious outbreak, and they were vaping within the last 90 days in, like, 2019. And we're not seeing this anymore because they're not they wised up and are stopping using vitamin E as they You think, ooh, vitamin C is good for or vitamin E is good for you. Well, it must be good to inhale. <laughs> let, let me take a toot off of my vape pen, man. man. And, uh, yeah, no, that, that's not good. Not so much. So that was from a an article in the journal Sirius, uh, C E U uh, C U. My God, I'm having a problem today. C U R E U S 2019 vitamin E acetate as a plausible cause of acute vaping related illness. So I do appreciate uh, James H correcting us on that because we were just talking off the hook, off the cuff, and uh, you know what a surprise we didn't know what we were talking about. So. Mm. Oh, and the uh, the uh, it's not <laughs> I'm, I'm doubly an idiot because it's right here in front of me. The e, it's e-cigarette or vaping product use associated lung injury, which is E V A L I or E Valley is the name of the syndrome. And hmm. the reason I don't know it is because we don't fucking see it anymore because nobody's putting that shit in their vape pens anymore. All right, that's a good. So thing. that's a good thing. Yeah. All right, so that's what I have. Um, we're going to probably be deplatformed after this next story, um, unless we use we could use code words. Okay, let's use code word code words. What should the code word be? Hmm. How about uh, the big eye? The big eye. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking at a uh, this. This is what pissed me off. Okay, here's a CNBC article. Uh, the big eye. Okay, it's ivermectin. A drug once touted as a COVID treatment by conservatives doesn't Ooh. seem to work, okay? Um, it doesn't improve recovery much. Clinical trial finds. Team of scientists affiliated with Duke University found that I, I okay, ivermectin. I'm just going to say, it. I'm not going to, let's, you know, I don't like it when certain people call, like, people Carl, Kevin, or people named Shuley, you know, <laughs> Stooley or Dooley and stuff. And, uh, you know, I don't like that. So we're just going to say it. It's ivermectin. <laughs> Does not meaningfully improve the recovery of people with mild to moderate COVID. So, yeah, okay, good. We have talked about this for a long time that we need frigging data on this um, thing. Because I, anyone who has been listening to this show for any period of time knows that we never recommended that people take ivermectin no. that that there but we didn't say people were stupid for thinking that maybe it would have some efficacy there were reasons why people thought it might be efficacious against covid-19 because it has known rna virus act 
antiviral activity and, oh, uh, COVID, you know, coronaviruses or RNA viruses. Hmm, maybe it would have some effect. So all during this, when people were shitting on Joe Rogan, saying he was eating horse paste when he was prescribed, uh, legally Mm -hmm. prescribed, and let me say that word so it comes out right, legally prescribed, off-label, by his physician, a human drug called ivermectin, Mm -hmm. which is used for a lot of things. It's very well tolerated. Uh, And uh, Joe Rogan himself, if you listen to two second sound bites, he, you know, you could make all kinds of claims about Joe Rogan. But if you listen to the whole thing, he said, listen, I'm a dumbass. I don't know. Mm -hmm. This was prescribed to me by my doctor. I just did what my doctor told me to do. So, um. We also explored the fact that there were 72 studies on clinicaltrials.gov looking at ivermectin. We were never those that are saying, oh, you know, of ivermectin. But it, I did say people who are rooting for it to fail were part of the problem. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Yeah. You want to root for anything I mean, that's off any the Any damn shelf. thing that helps. Anything that helps. So we have molnupiravir. We have Paxlovid. Thank God. You've got outpatient... Uh, remdesivir, although not very many people are using it. And we do have the uh, new uh, sotrovimab, the new monoclonal antibody. Okay. So we have we have stuff right on. now. So we don't have to worry about ivermectin so much because we know molnupiravir works. It makes people feel better, faster. It improves productivity. It only decreases um, hospitalization in the highest uh, risk factor, folks, by about 30%. But then for those people, we have Paxlovid, which uh, is around 80-something percent preventing people going to the hospital who are at high risk. And are these drugs perfect? No. But they, they, have, been, they have proven efficacy. Now, back to ivermectin, because I am an empiricist. I'm interested in the science. So here is one from October 21st, 2022. And this is in Journal of the American Medical Association. This isn't some shite journal. Mm -hmm. It says effective ivermectin versus placebo on time to sustain recovery in outpatients with mild to moderate COVID-19, a randomized clinical trial. There you go. There you That's go. what we've been looking for. Thank you. So the question was, does ivermectin uh, for three days compared with placebo shorten symptom duration among adults uh, outpatients in the U.S. with symptomatic mild to moderate? And what they found on that endpoint was that there was a decrease in uh, symptom burden, but it wasn't statistically significant. Okay. So uh, let me see uh, if I can get the numbers here. I've got it. it, it there were, there were 1,591 patients total. That is correct. Yep. But I'm trying to find. because oh, sorry. Of, uh, no, yeah. that's what you're fine. If you have the number, the medium time to recovery. Okay. It was 12 days in the ivermectin group and 13 days in the placebo group. Okay. Um, so that was shown not to be statistically significant. However, they showed, they looked at some other things too. Okay. And nobody, you know, when you, oh, you conservatives, like, you know, <laughs> Jimmy Dore is not a conservative. He's as left wing as you can get. And he was like, you know, we ought to at least look at ivermectin. At least look at it right. And I'm no right winger and <laughs> I'm, uh, but I'm not. Uh, a left winger. Well, I am. Mm, I don't know what I am. I'm left wing on some stuff, and more, you're a swinger. I'm, I'm, you're a swinger. I'm a pragmatist. You're a I want to do what works. <laughs> right. I'm an empiricist. Show right. me the data, and yeah. I'll agree with what you're doing. But um, uh, so I and I never promoted the use of ivermectin. I never told anybody they should take it. Mm. Um, well, I said, do what your doctor tells you to do, hmm. but that there are some very reasonable people who are at least looking at it, and they wouldn't be looking at it if it was just completely out in left field. Right. You know, no one is looking at Xanax for uh, influenza right now, right. you know, because it would be nuts to do that. There were reasons why people thought this might do something. But there is one interesting thing in this article. It said uh, there were 10 hospitalizations in the ivermectin group and nine in the placebo group. So, you know, all right. Uh, Again, not statistically significant. 
But um, the most common serious adverse effects were COVID-19 pneumonia, ivermectin-5, placebo-7, again, not statistically significant. And uh, let me see if I can do this properly. Venous thromboembolism, ivermectin-1, placebo-5. Hmm. Now, that, uh, okay, you've got a large sample size and very small numbers, you know, so you, you can calculate the absolute risk of having a thromboembolism compared to placebo, but it would be interesting to know if it was statistically significant. Mm -hmm. So I did a chi-square analysis. You'll notice they didn't, in this article, they don't say whether that's statistically significant. You know why? Because it almost was. It isn't quite. We consider statistically significant or statistical significance to be this thing called five sigma. So that is... uh, um, you know, five times out of a hundred, or one time in twenty, okay. that it would be due to chance. So, okay. so that translates into a thing called a p number. It's a p of less than 0.05. and the p of this was 0. 0.08, which was approaching statistical significance. Almost. almost that means one, eight yeah. times in a hundred. Yeah. This would be due to chance, which still means ninety-two times out of a hundred, it won't be due to chance. Now. So it may just need a larger sample size. Okay. Because this is a very rare event to have venous thromboembolism when you have uh, COVID-19. So they had five, six out of 1,800, I think the total, or six out of uh, 1,591. Okay. So what does that work out to percentage-wise? Not much. Echo, what is... The percent of fifteen ninety one of shit. I asked it wrong. Never mind. <laughs> um, never mind. Echo, don't answer. Nine thousand. No, 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 no. Don't answer that. Echo, stop. What? Echo. What percentage of one five nine one is six? Six is zero point three seven seven one percent of one thousand five hundred. So zero point three. Yeah. So point three percent. Okay. Yeah. That's a very it, so this study may not be big enough to be able to show whether this is statistically significant, but I don't see anybody talking about this. What if, yeah, you do the molnupiravir, you do all this stuff, and if you got somebody that's at high risk, let's say they're immobile, that you throw in a little vitamin I and it will decrease the risk of thromboembolic events. And by the way, for those that don't know, venous thromboembolism is when you get a blood clot in a vein and it moves. Okay. So venous vein, thrombo, blood clot, embolism, that thing's moving. Okay. And it usually is not, it doesn't move to a good place. It goes right into the yeah. lung. Yeah. Okay. Rarely goes somewhere good. Well, it's nowhere good for it to go. No, no. <clears throat> so, and that causes a pulmonary embolism. So, uh, wouldn't that be something? Hmm. I mean, this is it's really close to being statistically significant finding, and they're not, they're just, Bleh, you know, well, all we looked at was, no, you looked at some other things, mm-hmm. and this one thing was uh, actually kind of impressive. Hmm. So, uh, I'm interested in seeing if they follow up on that. So we'll see, all right? But wow. listen, I, uh, I'm i going to say whatever YouTube says I have to say, mm-hmm. which sure. is ivermectin does not appear to have any efficacy for improving outcomes in COVID-19. Right. So don't, you know, we don't, we don't recommend it. No. Do whatever your doctor or healthcare provider says. But... There's some tantalizing evidence when it comes to thromboembolism. Yeah. I'm going to just say that Which by God important. right now. And these were in people who had mild to moderate disease. So, you know, who knows what we would see if in uh, patients with uh, you know, severe. moderate to severe disease. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Wow, wow, wow. Interesting. Right. So I'm just interested in the data, and I am. it pisses me off when people um, just look at one thing and say, oh, well, he says— uh, you know, I, ivermectin, there's reasons why people would uh, be interested in studying it. So he must be mega, man. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. Looking at data in a real journal. Right. 
Yeah. And it's interesting how this, this, this finding is completely, completely glossed over yeah. everywhere. Yeah. What, say what? But, but it's just the only way we're going to find out anything is yeah. to do this, do the research. You know? Dr. Scott looked like a MAGA <laughs> maniac, but he and I agree on this. Oh, gosh, yeah. 100%. All right. He probably is MAGA. Hey, Carl has got a good question real quick. <laughs> okay. Um, and, and, and it's about the uh, blood clots. Can you get a blood clot in your penis? And the answer is? Oh, absolutely, absolutely yes. Yeah. Yeah, but technically you can get anywhere. Thrombosis of the dorsal vein, that big vein on the on the uh, top. Well, the you know, yeah, the part that you can see, mm-hmm. the top. Yeah, and um, that's not good. You can get no. blood clots inside your penis in the caverna that you know the spongy spongy places right. that fill up with blood when you get a giant meaty erection. You could get a clot in there too, and that you don't have erections after that. No, yeah, I was gonna say that's devastating. Uh, let's see. Of good question, I mean, Carla. Yes, very good one. Well, that was from um, th- thrombosis of the dorsal vein of the penis has a name. Does anybody know what it is? And don't look it up. No, you can look it up. I don't. I'll, I'll send a. Uh, I'll send a couple of poker chips to the first person in the chat who gets it. But you only have about a second <laughs> while we play uh, interlude music. <laughs> Yeah. That's not how you fix the blood clot in the penis, by the way. <laughs> no. Okay, nobody it's got it. It's Mondor's it. disease. Mondor's. Hello, I am Mondor. <laughs> of the <laughs> Mondor testicles of the island of Pinos. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, dorsal vein thrombosis is a rare disease with pain and induration, meaning sw- kind of swelling, uh, of the dorsal part of the penis. Mm. Mm-hmm. Possible causes: trauma. Yeah, yeah. Uh, neoplasm, excessive sexual activity, or abstinence. So either effing too much or not effing enough. Yes, I may. End There's up a balance. With this. There is definitely a balance in there, isn't there? <laughs> differential diagnosis must be established with scler- <laughs> sclerotizing lymphangitis. And Peroni's disease, Ugh. Doppler ultrasound is the imaging diagnostic technique of choice. Proper diagnosis and consequent reassurance can help dissipate the anxiety typically experienced by patients with this disease. Yikes. Yeah. No, thank you. That sounds awful. I know. So everything in moderation again. Yeah, everything in moderation. It makes sense to Boning me. too much. <laughs> Get Mondor's <laughs> disease. <laughs> Uh, All right. <clears throat> what else you got? It just sounds awful. Um, I've got a couple things, a couple things, a couple interesting things. Okay. I was, I saw well, if the, you look at my Twitter, you can see my chi-square analysis, by the way. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, um, real, I saw this earlier today. First patient receives potentially cancer-stopping pill in a new clinical trial. Okay. What the fuck is this? So that's pretty cool. So researchers at the City of Hope in Los Angeles, it's the largest... In, or one of the largest integrated cancer centers, um, say so they have a, a new cancer stopping pill. And um, okay, by the way, this was published by City of Hope. Yeah, let's say this. Yeah, this is not. I didn't find this on. No, no, on no. Public. I know, but it's a phase one clinical trial. Yeah, but what? what <clears throat> so they're tooting their own horn, by the way. Right. Yes, and what they're hoping is that they can use this. It, it, it works on stopping the um, um, the cells from mul- multiplicating. And, um, multiplicating. Multiplicating. That's not even a word, is it? Well, I don't, I don't <laughs> my multiplicating table there. Replicating, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> do some and ciphering my, in the gazentas. My gazentas, my gazentas. Two gazenta four twice. Uh, my gazentas are, 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 are firing on half a cylinder today. but um, That's proliferating cell nuclear antigen. And uh, it uh, plays an essential role in the replication and repair of cells. Right. They thought it would be a less toxic cancer therapy, so they're t- targeting these mutant cells while leaving normal cells alone. So, I'm very excited about this. Um, and it's well, they're showing some promise against uh, working with um, promising against breast cancers, prostate cancers, ovarian cancers, skin cancers, lung cancers. But what they're saying is that maybe they can use this in connection or conjunction with the other existing chemotherapy. Well, sure, medications, which would be so you'd still have. Um, a great a, a, attack, but I think they were trying to use this for for some of the um, cancers that had become resistant to therapy. Yeah, and so just some some adjunctive therapies is what it looks like. Wow, wouldn't that be cool? Is this 
is this some kind of, it says here, don't you do the good manufacturing practice thing? Isn't that what you do when you make your thing? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have yeah, to get certified simpler herbals, through that? Simpler herbals, yeah. She said G- good GMP facilities are manufacturing her medicine. Is this yeah. some kind of herbal shit? Oh, I don't know. I didn't read that part. I mean, that. how cool would that be if it actually worked? Right. Well, and you know, Dr. Steven, and, 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 and when I say herbal shit, I don't mean, you know, is it? No, I know what you mean. I'm just using that. No, I'm the one that uses the herbal shit, like flying yeah, yeah. squirrel feces. Yeah. But that's different, of course. But you know most of these medications that you use in, in chemo as chemotherapy agents come from, um, they're a derivative of some plant or animal. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for the most part, yeah. Oh yeah, most our antibiotics were all found by uh, having uh, fungal cells that were killing bacteria in uh, petri dishes, and then you cut out the uh, piece of the petri dish where the cells are, you know, where the bacteria won't live. Right. And then you uh, run it through uh, a bunch of different um, analytic tools to figure out the structure of whatever the hell it is right. that's in that Petri dish that that mold created. And then you can take that and you can start changing it. Mm-hmm. Once you get the basic structure and you figure out how it's preventing bacteria from replicating or how it's killing bacteria or how it's signaling the immune system, you can change a methyl group here or a hydroxyl group there and make it more or less potent or change the targets and do all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, all of the cephalosporins, at, you know, it's a broad group of antibiotics. That's how they were discovered. Huh. Yeah, pretty neat. That's incredible. And penicillin was a mold. Yep, 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 yep. And uh, it... Uh, you know, killed bacteria, and uh, you know that I don't know if it, if it's true that they would actually take moldy bread and strap it to infected uh, war wounds. I don't know if that's true or not. Yeah, but you know, but that's the if image that's all you've got. Yeah, you know, if, that's, if that's all you got, certainly. Well, that's the image I have. And back in the yeah. beginning, penicillin killed just about everything, and then the yeah. stupid bacteria were like, "Well, f this. Yeah. We're going to learn how to be resistant." We're going to mutate. And you know, the one bacterium that has never learned how to how to be uh, resistant to plain old penicillin. There's a couple mm. of them. Strip? Yeah. They're very good. Okay. Give yourself a bill. Excellent, Dr. Scott. So, yeah, uh, we still use regular old plain penicillin for strep throat. Yep. All right. Blind oh, hog stumbles awesome. across an acorn every once in a while. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I am interested in this... Um, PCNA study. Yeah, hopefully, so, hopefully it turns into something good. I've, my understanding is the first patient that took it tolerated it very well. So now we just have to see yeah. if it works. Now, so <clears throat> let's remind everybody what a phase one clinical s- s- trial is. Those are small clinical trials. Might have twenty, forty people in it, just to make sure that the thing sort of does what you think it's supposed to do and it, it's not killing people or right. giving them no, horrible dangerous. adverse effects. Right. Then phase two might have 300 people in it and you're looking for adverse effects. And then phase three, you could have you know 3,000 to 30,000 people and you're looking for efficacy. By the way, I am in a phase three Pfizer trial for an influenza vaccine. That's oh, wow. M- mRNA. And I tolerated it very well, and we'll just, by gut, see what happens. Today's episode is brought to you by Angie. Angie has made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your jobs and projects done well. Let me tell you, there's the version of it where you try to do something at home, and then there's a version of it where you have someone help you, you watch them do it the right way, and you go, thank God I didn't try to do that myself. I have fully done things around the home that I think look good and then a bang in the night and I wake up to a shelf collapsing, a painting falling off the wall. Like it, I've, I've seen it all go south. I own a home and I can tell you, I know how much work it can take. Whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality, it can be hard just to know where to start. But now all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise you need. Whatever your home project, big or small, indoor or outdoor, you can Angie that and connect with skilled professionals to get the project done well. Right now, one of my wish lists is I want a bike for my condo in Milwaukee and I would love to rig it up on a pulley in the ceiling because I have one of those like lofted ceilings, but I'm so scared to try that on my own. Angie has 20 years of home experience and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly, which means you can take care of any home project in just a few taps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your home, you can do this when you Angie that. 
Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. This is what you do when you've just found that statement handbag on eBay and you want to build an entire wardrobe around it. You start selling to keep buying. Yep, on eBay. Over that all black everything phase, list it and buy all the color. Feeling more vintage than ever? It's out with the new and in with the pre-loved. Next thing you know, you've refreshed your wardrobe basically without spending a dime. Yeah, eBay, the place to buy and sell new, pre-loved, vintage, and rare fashion. Earning your degree online doesn't mean you have to go about it alone. At Capella University, we're here to support you when you're ready. From enrollment counselors who get to know you and your goals, to academic coaches who can help you form a plan to stay on track. We care about your success and are dedicated to helping you pursue your goals. Going back to school is a big step, but having support at every step of your academic journey can make a big difference. Imagine your future differently at capella.edu. Sergeant and Mr. Smith, you're going to love this house. Bunk beds in a closet? There's no field manual for finding the right home. But when you do, USAA Homeowners Insurance can help protect it the right way. Restrictions apply. Introducing our biggest GMC Acadia ever. Offering bigger screens, bigger views, and even bigger journeys. Live your biggest life in the all-new GMC Acadia. I did not get myocarditis. I didn't get anything. That's a good thing. Yeah. All right. That's a good thing. Are you done? Oh, well, I've got one more if you want it. Okay. Well, yeah, sure. We'll yeah, go. we got a good one. It's a, a, a <laughs> so this is good news. Okay. A, a derivative of the love hormone oxytocin. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah, which is a good thing. I love me some oxytocin. Love me some oxytocin. You can buy it over the counter at a compounding pharmacy. It's a couple of squirts up the nose, and then they have a bone session, and it is awesome. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Oh, it's the gosh. trust hormone. <laughs> <laughs> It's the thing that I'm gonna have to start taking a shot of that before I come in. Here. It's uh, maybe <laughs> every so. Wednesday afternoon. Maybe so. We should give it to our audience so they'll That's trust right. us. Oh my god! But, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it's associated with bonding of right. mother to child because when uh, children, you know, when babies breastfeed, you have oxytocin release, mm -hmm. and uh, you know it's it's released during orgasm mm -hmm. and all kinds of stuff. So it's when you're cool. strutting your stuff, and when you're strutting your stuff, and, you're, and exchanging some fluid, <laughs> exchanging fluid. All right, everybody, take a drink. <laughs> so the derivative it's a, it's of, fluid. of oxytocin, okay. and this is this is even the best part. Mm -hmm. Oxytocin reverses cognitive impairment in Alzheimer's. Disease. What? Yeah, no, this was incredible. I haven't seen this one. Yeah, this is for incredible. how long? Well, this stuff is very short lived. They, in the body. they just found out. So, <clears throat> the the you know the the basic part of this this is this research is that a derivative of the, the oxytocin is is not easily um, accessed. It doesn't cross the blood brain barrier well. Yeah. And so what they were doing, they were oh. they were actually injecting in, into mice, and and saw that it it helped with dementia and Alzheimer's. So what these scientists have done is they're they're coming up with a different version of it that they can replicate and not have to put it into your your brain directly, you know, where they can make it a pill or or, or a liquid, a medicine, uh, hmm. for lack of better terms. Are you sure it doesn't cross the blood brain barrier? No, no, no it, it it does, but it's not, not very well. Okay. Yeah, not not yes, yes or yeah. It does, but not in the doses that they want it to. Okay. To make it to make oh, it viable to, for Alzheimer's. For Alzheimer's, dementia. they yeah. want a bigger dose. Okay. Right on. Right on. Yeah. So okay. it's pretty cool. So that's good news. So I would say the more oxytocin that we can release, the yeah, um, I think that's good. That's another good reason to. But you would think though, if do this were true, with fluid. then if you had Alzheimer's dementia, and you jerked off, that you would temporarily get better. Yeah, but you know what? When you get to that age, the the yeah, odds on getting an erection are yeah, um, zero. So, um, but it, it kind of makes you wonder if 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 you gave someone these the uh, intranasal um, application of the oxytocin, if it made them have yeah. momentary lapses of yeah of um, kind of being aware or being being with us. So that that's the good news. There are. Um the, have you heard about this stuff using etanercept, which is, I guess, Enbril. They use it for, for, for our, Crohn's disease and right. stuff like that. Disorder, yeah. And they're using it for stroke patients. No, I have not. And they're actually injecting it into the base of their brain. 
And I don't know if this is BS or not. I want to see some good studies on this. But the the YouTube stuff is amazing. There's this lady. Good I think. And oh, no, I don't, see- shut up. I'm not playing you. you bring it up? There's this lady in here that can, has uh, a thing called aphasia. It's okay. Only been a brief few okay, here we go. Now, Let me see if I can she's find willing her. to. Having the stretches is very. Okay, this, I'm sorry, everybody. This is terrible. There is a lady in here that has this thing called aphasia. And it's broke as aphasia. And you get that when the left part of your brain, certain of the speech center is, is affected. And these people can't um, uh, find words. Worse than me. They, get, they have very difficult, uh, very much... Um, difficulty finding words and some of them can't find any words at all although they can often say things like shit and piss and stuff like that so those mm-hmm. words must be stored somewhere else because <laughs> i've seen people with broke as aphasia they just go oh shit oh shit oh shit <laughs> right. and they can say that very fluently yeah but they can't say anything else i gotta find this lady okay here she is all right let's try this let's see if this will play that was reducing the effects of stroke Okay. Isn't fully tested okay, and is quiet. viewed cynically by many neurologists. Yes. But that hasn't stopped Linda, and the results are something to see. Yeah, this is pretty amazing. Here's this lady. What's different? Ah. It's only been a brief few minutes since Linda Lumbra received that injection of etanocept at the base of her brain. Clear. 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 She's been tipped upside down to allow the medicine to flow into her brain. Oh my! Remember, this is stroke-affected Linda Listen to just that. before the injection. Oh my! Moments after the shot, she sits up. And really, broke as aphasia, they don't usually stutter like that or stammer. They just can't say it. Okay. The words aren't there. So this is something a little different. Uh, you know, if you say count to 10 and she can do it, but albeit insanely slowly, that's not exactly broke as a face. It could be partial. The change in Linda is something to behold. It, it's gone. Ooh. Hi. <laughs> Hello there. Yeah, and that's something. What? So, yeah, yeah. So, I, I, you know, you never know when they... Uh, this is 60 minutes, so I'm presuming that they didn't just pull a fast one on 60 minutes. Right. Uh, but I want to see the actual studies on this. So, so you know, uh, the only but thing I've... I, it's, I, an anti, it's a po- potent anti-inflammatory. Right. Well, the only thing I was going to say is, is what I have seen over in Europe <clears throat> are the injection of stem cells into um, stroke-affected parts of the brain to regenerate brain, the, the brain itself. Yeah, yeah. But I have never heard of them using like an embryo. I'm into the. Uh, that's interesting. Let's see if they do. They have any results with that um, stem cell Gosh, treatment? It's because they just inject stem cells everywhere. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I don't. Let me see. Cardiovascular. Okay. Mm-mm-mm. Chronic cerebral aspects of long COVID. Now I don't care about that. Um, okay, perispinal etanercept. It advances as a neurotherapeutic. Randomized controlled t- trial validating the use of paraspinal etanercept to reduce post-stroke disability has wide-ranging implications. Now, this is in expert reviews of neurotherapy, not a turd journal. And uh, let's see here. Um, the, okay. The dogma has been the simple, non-invasive way to accomplish this goal is not possible with many agents, including biologicals, because they are too large to cross the blood-brain barrier. Various novel technologies to breach the blood-brain barrier have been attempted, but with little success. Okay, so just inject it, you know, on the other side of the blood-brain barrier. Mm -hmm. Randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial administered a widely used anti-tumor necrosis factor biological, which are just basically insanely powerful uh, anti-inflammatories and etanercept, given via paraspinal injection, which bypasses the blood-brain barrier turns this dogma on its head. This new trial holds much promise for stroke survivors as well as having implications for developing treatments based on other large molecules that can't otherwise cross the blood-brain barrier. So, all right. God. Maybe there's something there. Well, let's hope so. because you That's not, you know, just some wackadoodle journal. No, and certainly we've all seen the devastation of those 
Okay, now, okay, now this is the same guy. Now he published a case report. Okay. And um yeah, it's a case report. Immediate resolution of hemispatial neglect. Okay, hemispatial neglect is an interesting one. It's when you have a stroke, say, on the left side of your brain, and then you say they they will always look to that side and they don't think that their own hand is theirs. Okay. And you'll say, whose hand is that? You can hold it up mm-hmm. and, and say, whose hand is that? And they'll say somebody else's. Hmm. It doesn't feel like their hand. Their brain won't accept that it's theirs, which also tells you that there is a switch in your brain that says, this is mine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. Because if you turn it off and it says it's not mine, yeah. okay, there's that some switch not. in there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's very interesting. So uh, those people, that's very frustrating. Mm-hmm. They, they're they very hard to rehabilitate because they really can't, <laughs> they, they won't do anything with that side of their body that they're neglecting. No. And uh, so he had immediate resolution of hemispatial neglect. So I would like to see that. And uh, I'd like to hold up some hope for stroke victims that maybe some of this stuff might help them. It would be because wonderful. the the brain and the central nervous system is really is the last frontier of medicine. Mm-hmm. We don't know how any of it works. No. You know, we thought we knew how Alzheimer's works, and now they're finding other reasons why maybe it's happening. So we'll, uh, you know, more on that. I used to say 100 years for that, too. Maybe we're getting a little bit closer to, to 10, 15 years on some of this stuff for the brain. Going to be wonderful. I used to say 100 years for cancer, and now they're selling car T cell therapy. I saw somebody the other day that had had it. Wow. Yeah. They're doing it by lottery right now. Oh, are they really? Yeah. So if you um, are eligible, for, for those that don't remember, car T cell therapy is this chimeric antigen receptor T cell therapy. And what it is basically is they train your T cells to kill your own cancer. And uh, it, we talked about it years ago on this show. It's actually on our website at drsteve.com. If you look at non-pseudoscience cancer cures, there's uh, the the first case where it was used was against a woman with um, – or for a woman. Uh, a, it was against a woman's cancer. She had terminal uh, cervical cancer. Ugh. My understanding is she's still walking this earth today well. because of this. And now they're just doing it. But they, it's so not that – it's so rare mm. that they're just having to do it by lottery. So if you mm. qualify for it, they'll put you in a lottery. And if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. You go back to regular treatment until it we can get it to everybody. Pretty cool, though. That's incredible. Yep. All right. That sounds good. All right. Let's see. Let's see what this guy says. Hey, Dr. Steve. Uh, my name is John. Hey, John. Uh, um, before we do that. Number one thing, don't take advice from some asshole on the radio. <laughs> exactly. Thanks for taking my call. You're welcome, Hope sir. you're doing well. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, I went ahead and accidentally knocked up my girlfriend. Okay. And I've always been told throughout uh, most of my life that, my uh, the tubes that go from your balls into your dick, you know, where the sperm goes. Yeah. Or they're all tangled up, I guess, or something. And that my likelihood of conceiving is very low. Well, they were wrong. And <laughs> she is thinking about terminating. Oh. But if this is my only chance oh. at uh, conceiving, yeah, then I uh, want to, you know, try to talk her out of it. Okay. Uh, but well. so. Hmm. I guess what I'm asking is what the chances are of this being my only chance. Okay, that I cannot answer. Mm -hmm. Obviously. It's not zero. It's not zero. (laughs) That's right. Assuming that this is your kid. (laughs) That's the other thing. You know, it could, you know, it might not be. But uh, the, you know, if you have a hypothesis that there are no white crows, and you see a black crow, and you see another black crow, and you see another black crow, all of those things. Uh, bolster your hypothesis. But if you see one white crow, it negates your hypothesis. Yep. So uh, the odds were very low, but they sure, like Scott said, they're not zero. So what are they? Could Is this a one in a million thing? Mm-hmm. Or could you conceive normally? So how would you know? Here's how you would know. 
go do a sperm sample. Go to right. your primary exactly. care. Yep. Say, I want to know what my sperm count is. What are the odds that I could conceive later? Mm-hmm. And your uh, girlfriend got to make this decision for herself. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's moral arguments. There's all this. In the end, she's just got to make this decision herself. And, uh, you know, our opinion really doesn't We're matter. We're here for the science. We're here yeah, for the science. Our opinion doesn't matter. No. And really, kind of, your opinion does matter, mm-hmm. but it kind of doesn't – It you. she has veto power. She's. It's, it's like when – Dr. Scott and I were in business at the beer store. Yeah. He was 51% and I was 49%. So if he wanted to run it into the ground, <laughs> which he did, then uh, I True. couldn't do anything about it. I had some input in running it into the ground, but I didn't have the final say. And it's kind of the same thing here is you have input. She shouldn't – I'm sure she doesn't want to make this decision in a vacuum – but I don't want you to be pressuring her one way or the other based on information that you don't know. So go find out. Mm-hmm. Now, if your sperm count is normal or close to normal, then you can impregnate somebody else. And then that takes that pressure off. But you, if, if you're going to make a decision about being a father or being a mother, you should do it for reasons that make sense. right? And right now... You don't know the answer to that. Mm-hmm. So take away that unknown yeah. and find out. And then, yeah, if your sperm count is zero, oops, might not be your kid. <laughs> but if your sperm count is w- w- low, 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 then, yeah, it might be unlikely that you would have uh, the ability to have a kid later. But then you got to decide, I've got to commit to this kid, you know. Yep. that's got You're going to have to commit. And um, if um, – if your sperm count is <laughs> low normal or normal, then yeah, you can just go impregnate somebody else, and then you guys can have a different conversation. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, I'll shoot you. Okay, always worried giving advice to people because this isn't really an advice show. It's we're, it's supposed to be. A, I don't think we, we we gave him the science component. Go find yeah, out yeah. if you get yes, yes, yes. You, yeah. That's how you I mean, would. Bottom know. line is, don't listen to what we say, but just go get your. Sperm That's check. right. That's right. Number one thing, don't take advice from some asshole on the radio. And uh, but uh, go do that tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tomorrow, take the guess. Well, out of it. okay. The, whenever you hear this, <laughs> anyway, whenever you hear this, the first business day, go to your primary care. Say, I need an order for a sperm count. Yeah. And then, if you want to send it to me, you can do that. I will be happy to look at it, and I will tell you. Uh, I will ha- be happy to interpret the results for you. In a, a way that's just your old pal who happens to have a medical degree, not as your doctor. <laughs> All right? Good stuff. Good okay. stuff. All right. Here's well, hi, Dr. Steve. This is D.R. Perkins. I'm hey, DR. the fellow that uh, has been emailing with you over the yeah. past few years. Thank you for all the answers you've given me. You're welcome, sir. In the past. Thanks for your support. I'm rather surprised that you remember me because of course. Uh, you guys must be polymaths. Okay, this guy, by the way, is the guy that came up, referred to us the um, vibrating, air shooting uh, sex toy that is uh, at, that you can look at at stuff.drsteve.com. Gotcha. Okay, it's down at the very bottom. I separated the adult stuff from the <laughs> other stuff. Anyway, but that was Dr. Perkins. I always thought it was Doctor Perkins. I thought I was talking to another uh, to a colleague. Anyway, Doctor Scott. Hey. hey. Uh, be able to answer emails and on top of that remember who, who the folks are that call you yeah. uh, I would think that uh, being on call and being a ham radio operator and <laughs> all the things you do you must be busier than a one-legged man in a butt kicking contest <laughs> but oh, uh, to get to the uh, <laughs> yes sir oh sorry describe <laughs> what happened after uh I noticed flashes in my peripheral vision. Okay, so we don't have a whole lot of time left, but we got a little bit. He emailed me and or, uh, on the text message thing, I think, one or the other, said I'm having flashes in my vision on one side. If you have lightning flashes in your vision when you move your eye a certain way, it's either a vitreous detachment or a retinal detachment. Go see an ophthalmologist right then. Soon, yeah. 
And so I wrote back to him, and he said, well, they said I can get me in in two weeks. I said, no. No, 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 no. Call them back and say you've got a retinal or a vitreous detachment. They'll get you in today. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened. So he's going to say what what happened here. And no pain involved. Right. And I, therefore, was going to ignore it. He told me not to ignore it, so I... Where I live, uh, there's not very many ophthalmologists on call. I had to travel an hour and a half to uh, find an expert to look at my eye. It's worth it. And uh, making a rather long story short. Yeah, not so short. uh, It turns out (laughs) that uh, that my vitreous humor is, uh, from old age, uh, shrinking and pulling away from the backside of my eyeball. So, yeah, so your eye, you think it's filled with water. It's not. It's like a jelly. Mm -hmm. It's a gel. And as you get, as you age, that gel will start to dehydrate and shrink. And when it does, it doesn't have anywhere to go. It will pull away from the retina. When it does, fluid will rush in because there is fluid in there, mm-hmm. that take up the place yeah. of the where the jelly was mm-hmm. adherent to the retina. And what comes with that fluid is all kinds of cells and debris, and you get floaters and stuff. Drives you crazy. If I was a um, histologist, you know, somebody that looks in a microscope all the time, I would have had to have retired probably 15 years ago when my had, when I had my vitreous detachment. So. And what that... Uh can do is it can tear the retina, and in my That's case, right. it has not torn it yeah, yeah. yet. Cool. Good. Uh, nothing for it because it's old age related. And Well, uh, okay, so if you get horrible, horrible floaters, they can actually do a vitrectomy where they take out the vitreous humor. Think about that. Your yeah. eyeball is a closed sphere so they got to cut into your eyeball it's going to look like a deflated balloon (laughs) yeah right and i've seen we could talk about that someday too i've seen one of those and they suck it out and then they put saline back in it the problem is Hmm. that there's an increased risk of course of infection and if that eyeball gets infected on the inside you lose the eye so they don't want to do it unless they absolutely have to because i was uh, you know talking to my retinologist about it he said i'll do it but i don't recommend it Ugh. it's like okay if you don't recommend it i'm not no, doing it no. i'm not gonna force you into something i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly yes vitreous humor perfect uh, perfect and i really don't have much of a humor about it but uh, <laughs> and i have to ask you and dr scott Fuck you know yeah. when you have guys like me that call in and try to pronounce latin words no it's just dr uh, scott do your patients, in doing that, uh, produce a stigma upon themselves, sort of like a Yankee trying to no. talk no. Southern? <laughs> no, because I use plain words anyway. Physicians should be prov- – healthcare providers should use plain words. Mm-hmm. And we've talked about this before, too. And thank you, Dr. Perkins. I, it was a great phone call, and I really appreciate the follow-up. And, you know, there might be somebody out there that will help. Yeah, exactly. But uh, even using positive and negative, we shouldn't use that. We use that differently. If you have a positive checkbook balance, that's a good thing. If you have a positive attitude, that's a good thing. If you have a positive <laughs> biopsy, that's not that's a good not thing. A good thing. <laughs> it's not a good thing. It's a bad thing. It's a bad thing. And, you know, we use these words the, differently than our patients do. Mm-hmm. This is an... A, Absolute true story. One of my friends, uh, who is a physician, his mother called him and said, "Oh, thank God, my flu test was positive." She thought that was a good thing. Yep. Yep. Now, who would call up some little old lady and go, "Oh, by the way, your influenza test was positive." Click. Click. Yep. You know, and what assholes. But anyway, that we do encounter that in this profession. Yep. People are uh, don't think about these things. And negative. I've seen people get upset because their CAT scan was negative, yep. thinking that it was a bad thing. Yep. So, no, we don't worry about... Uh, now, there are, D.R. Perkins, there are some funny things when people, instead of saying they have fibroids in their uterus, say they have fireballs in their universe, mm-hmm. <laughs> and instead of uh, myasthenia gravis, say they have Monsignor gravies. I've seen that one. So. Or how about ro- how about rotary cup instead of rotator cup? Yeah, rotary cup. <laughs> I got my uh, I, I tore my rotary cup. Tore my rotary cup. 
I have to see. wonder about uh, what still going? the yeah. doctor's <laughs> attitude is towards the patient after no, that. No, nothing. Because, uh, we either find it amusing or endearing, but it's not. Or both. We don't, we don't expect our patients to know Latin and Greek no. and stuff like that. It's no. crazy. So no. I, I do, though, if I have a doctor that there's a word that means programmed cell death. It's A P O P T O S I S. Have we talked about this on the show before? A, a little bit, but I. Oh, we have? Yeah, okay. Yeah. But people will pronounce that apoptosis, and it's like, God, and that just makes me cringe. <laughs> now, I have a journalism degree, so so typos, I, I see them, and I have to fix them, and uh, that kind of stuff. But apoptosis, it's not apoptosis. There's no Greek prefix that's apop. <laughs> but there is a word, tosis, P-T- P-T-O. Um, yeah, P-T-O-S-I-S, yep. tosis, which means drooping, yep. and apo tosis means falling away or falling away of leaves mm-hmm. like you see uh trees when the leaves fall that's apoptosis mm-hmm. or a- apoptosis it just sounds better when you say apoptosis yeah i know and if you go on like uh webster's dictionary they'll pronounce it wrong too oh wow they'll say apoptosis <clears throat> they've got the computer anyway so there you go all right uh, anything from the uh, waiting room? Hello, I've run out of steam here. Do we, do we have any time left? <laughs> yeah, we've got yeah. a little bit. Yeah, real quick. Colin Carnes had a great question. Um, I'll are, be the judge of that. Are, <laughs> are there any over-the-counter um, herbal supplements out there, supplements to, to help treat SIBO? Now, he did take our advice, I think. He, okay, he, tell him. What, uh, that, so we're talking about small, small intestine, intestine bacterial overgrowth. Right. Yeah. And this one, we don't have time enough, but you throw out something. Yeah, but, but real quick, yeah, yeah, obviously the FODMAP diet can help, and there are some things that can help. Um, FODMAP is where you eliminate certain, certain foods, sugars, yeah, that, things that the bacteria eat. Yeah, that they love. And, and sometimes it's a lot of foods you would never suspect are really healthy foods otherwise. Yeah. So yeah. there are some over-the-counter um, supplements. Um, if you'll Google them, you can find some, but but there's a, a, a gazillion. Well, give them, we'll give them one. I can't think of one. Oh, for fuck's sake. You were just temporizing. <laughs> no. Okay, probiotics. Yes. Well, uh, you know, probiotics But there's actually some, help. some natural antibacterial um, supplements you can take, but they're all brands. That, really? Yeah. yeah. Let me look it up. Uh, Barberry has been shown. Barberry? Yep. Barberry, B-A-B-E-R. What the hell is that? Yeah, I don't know. Um, Oregon grapefruit, <laughs> golden seal. Have all been shown to help treat the bacteria and the, the, really? the, the, that are in, influencing. Get out of here. The, is there data on this? Or oh are you God, just yeah, the data is compelling. Some herbal website. The, the, the data is compelling. T- shut. Um, herbal therapy is equivalent to um, rifamaxin, mm. the treatment Rifax- of SIBO. Rifaxin, sons of Jesus. bitches. Sons of bitches. <laughs> 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 right. So there you go. Well, that's because you're an idiot. <laughs> so, so which one? So, which herbal things are equivalent to rifaxman? Because rifa- now, listen, yeah. this no, is a big no, deal I, if this I, is real. It is, yeah. And I just literally, I just literally found it. Give me two seconds. I'm, yeah. I'm scrolling down to the bottom of the for, <laughs> for the uh, for the for the actual because um, what they've shown. Okay, I'll just. Well, yeah, just oh, my God, hey, I'm looking. I'm looking. Right. I can only type so quickly. The um, but there are herbal formulas, and and I'll tell you, it's it's actually in um the uh, NIH National Library of Medicine. Okay, PubMed. So it's PubMed. This is a real deal. You okay, remember? that doesn't mean that it well, means that's PubMed. You can get listed in PubMed and be the oh, shittiest. God, here we go all. now. Now all of a sudden, no, you can't. Now it's in PubMed. It's no, no, no. You have to. <laughs> you have to look for the quality of the data. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Okay, here we go. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay, cinnamon, thyme, and pomegranate. Oh, get out of here with this. Oh, yeah, no, cinnamon's very good. Thyme, thyme, thyme oil and oregano oil both have been shown to be anti-bacterial. Uh, uh, Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme, right? Yep. It's per- <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Sp- for- sprinkle it on your pasta. Or it, <clears throat> your uh, Simon and Garfunkel song. Let me see. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna do some more research on this. We will get a, a, an actual real answer because this week. is not good radio. And you and I just looking at the no, internet. No. Colin, I'm sorry, but the answer is yes, and I promise you, next week I'll have some very good ones. I'll tell you what, Colin, actually call in. 
Yeah, that'd be then, cool. Yeah, call in the uh, or send us a voicemail. Hey, Kim Chickens is here. What's up, Kim? Hello, Kim. Hey, Kim. Do you know anything about Uva Ursi? Mm. Oh, that's Bearberry. Is she an actress? <laughs> It's Bear Berry. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. We're getting out of here. This is getting ridiculous. All right. For those who are in the uh, waiting room, we're going to play a couple of tunes. Everybody else, we will uh, see you soon. Thanks to everyone who listens to this show um, and uh, listen to our SiriusXM show on the Faction Talk channel. SiriusXM channel 103, Saturdays at 7 p.m. Eastern, Sunday, I think at 10 p.m. Eastern, but on demand. That's the best way to listen to it. And if you want to hear the WATP um, um, podcast crossover with Weird Medicine, there's two ways to do it. Go to your SiriusXM app and listen to that episode on demand. It's very clearly... Um, uh, demarcated or you can go to our Patreon patreon.com slash weird medicine and it's there I, it will never be a regular podcast sorry can't do it uh, thanks to uh, uh, Movie Messiah thanks to Carla Finch thanks to uh, Sean Pedrick and um, Rob, Bob Bobbington and Kim Chickens and all the other people in the chat room who I can't see right now so uh, thank you all for hanging out with us. Many thanks to our listeners whose voicemails and topic ideas make this job very easy. Go to our website, drsteve.com, for schedules, podcasts, and other crap. Until next time, check your stupid nuts for lumps. Quit smoking, get off your asses, get some exercise. We'll see you in one week for the next edition of Weird Medicine. Thanks, everybody.